Glenn Anderson, the first deaf black man to receive his PhD in the United States, is a brilliant and accomplished man. A man who has met and worked with presidents of the United States. He has been a member of national and prestigious state boards. He's a leader, encourager, an editor, and a brilliant and patient teacher. Glenn is probably the most humble and respected man you will ever meet, and he's a good friend to many, many people in a wide socioeconomic range that have had the privilege to know him. If you meet Glenn, you'd never imagine his simple beginning in one of the most dangerous areas of the United States, Chicago, Southside. I was born and reared in Chicago, Illinois. My home area was in the south side of Chicago. That was the predominantly black community and the heart of the black culture. My parents are gone now. My mom and dad, my father was a custodian, build, building custodian for the Chicago public school systems. My mother was a short order cook at a restaurant. Neither of my parents had a college degree. They were just a working class family. You would never think that becoming deaf could be a blessing but it changed the direction of Glenn Anderson's life. At the age of seven, he became seriously ill and was given an experimental drug that saved his life. It is true. I had pneumonia when I was uh, seven years of age, about seven years of age. And at that time, uh, the medication to, to help in the illness was experimental. Um, my parents informed the physician that they wanted to go ahead and try the medication because the doctor said, well, he may lose his hearing. And I was at seven at that age. And yes, that happened and uh, my life did change. Um, I wasn't able to attend the neighborhood public school and I had to go to um, a day class program for the deaf and so that meant I had to leave my home area every day and traverse to the schools. And I didn't realize the impact that would have on my life until later, because I grew up in that area. Their lives didn't turn out very positive. And I was, quote, saved by the influence of the neighborhood children because I was not going to school with them anymore. Most of them were uh, either died or in jail today. So I was fortunate in that sense that I was removed from that group. My wife and my mother both uh, had talked a lot about moving out of the neighborhood it seemed to help me because I wasn't with that core group. My parents never learned to sign. Their values was education and anything that would provide an opportunity for me to continue uh, my education was fine with them. It didn't matter where. So, but they never learned to sign. My father was good actor. He would mime things out in communication and my mother would write things back and forth. Sometimes I wouldn't understand mother's writing, but uh, I could speak well enough with them to understand me. If I didn't understand my mother, she would write it down for me. And my father, he would act it out. And if that didn't work, then my mother would write down for him. So it worked. I had a good family support. I, they valued would be common for many black deaf families in the 1950s. 
black families in, was uh, pushing education being better than the parents. And second would be never forget where from whence you come. Just because you become successful does not mean you can ignore your roots in the community. So for me, I cannot ignore the deaf community. I committed myself. So I've committed myself so to service, to service of the community, being involved in the community, and I have been ever since I left Gallaudet, to the point that when I came to Arkansas, I've been on the association, the Arkansas Association of the oh. Deaf, almost from the time that I actually arrived here in the state over 30 years ago. I am the current uh, Arkansas newsletter editor, uh, board member, I've been vice president, uh, served in various positions, chapter coordinator for their conferences, uh, MBDA, the National Black Deaf Advocates, I serve on their board of MBDA. This is my third time to serve on their board. Um, I give back. My name is Douglas Watson, and I have been for about 40 years working in the field of deafness, research and training, and I began in 1972 at NYU, New York University, and that's where I first met Glenn Anderson. At that time, he was a new rehab counselor from Detroit, Michigan. He came to New York, or NYU, uh, to apply for his Ph.D., he came into the program, and he worked with me as a student, uh, working part-time as a student, part-time studying and working, uh, going back and forth. So we shared an apartment for about four years and uh, there in New York, and that's where I got to know him very well. Glenn continued studying and working for about nine years and received his Ph.D. Uh, in 1981. And he got his Ph.D. from NYU. And then later, in 1982, I moved to the University of Arkansas in Little Rock and established the National Research and Training Center for Deafness and Hard of Hearing. And Glenn was the first person that I hired from New York. He moved down and became our director of training. And we worked together um, here for about uh, 25 years, and uh, 25 years here in Arkansas, and uh, both research, training, writing, publishing, plus teaching classes uh, with the students. And he coordinated all the graduate programs. Uh, and I think we had over 300 students go through uh, that program during that 25 years until the program finally closed and Glenn transferred to the University of Arkansas at Little Rock and now he works in the interpreter sign language training program uh, at UALR. And Glenn really is a very unique one-of-a-kind individual. He has made many many significant contributions to the field including being chairman at Gallaudet University for the Board of Trustees. Uh, he was there for about 15 years, uh, during 1988 on, uh, when King Jordan was the president. Glenn became the chairman of the board and worked for about 15 years there, and then just did different uh, other had other responsibilities there. 
Uh, and now he's at UALR teaching and enjoying himself. Uh, for me, I retired when the program closed at the Research and Training Center. But Glenn moved over and was continued working, uh, still doing a very good job. And now he's in a new field of interpreting and sign language interpreting rather than uh, working as rehab VR training at a master's degree level. And that, I congratulate him. Glenn uh, has had a very successful life and continues. Uh, he is one of the first national recognized uh, in the field who is not just white, black, Hispanic, things like that, but people look up to him. Uh, he is one of the first leaders to be successful and earn a Ph.D. and become a leader at a national level and has done that ever since, really, for 40 years now, uh, since 1972 until now, 2013.